Hi, good morning, boys and girls. Okay, so today's Friday, 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 Friday. <laughs> so we are week eight, day five of our chapter book, Read Out Louds. And I'm going to be reading the last chapters of this book. Okay, so I'll be reading chapters 10, 11, and 12. So let's get started. Here we go. Okay, so chapter 10 is called Digger. Digger. We, we each took a piece of cake with a candle stuck in it and followed Mr. Harrison down the stairs. I felt like a secret agent sneaking around in the dark. It was cool. Basements are scary, Emily said as we made our way downstairs. Yeah, there are probably monsters down there, I told her. Stop scare, trying to scare Emily, Andrea told me. I'm scared, said Emily. Hey, can we eat this cake, asked Ryan. You, can, you can't do that, said Mr. Harrison. We need the candles to light our way. If we had solar-powered flashlights, I said, we would be able to eat the cake. Well, you can't use your cake as a flashlight and eat it too, said Mr. Harrison. Finally, we reached the basement, and at the bottom of the stairs, there was a hole in the floor. I almost fell in it. I noticed this hole yesterday, said Mr. Harrison, and I think I know who made it too. Who, we all ask, a squirrel? A squirrel? A squirrel? Mr. Harrison told us that he had noticed a squirrel hanging around the monkey bars in the playground, digging digging deep holes in the dirt. He even gave her a name, Digger. I think Digger might have dug a hole into the school and chewed her way through an electrical wire, he told us. That would knock out the power and Mrs. Mentry might have fallen into the hole in the floor. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. If Digger chewed through a live electrical wire, Mr. Harrison told us, she probably got the shock of her life. There might be a fried squirrel down there. Ew, gross, we all said. Poor Digger, said Emily. I wonder what fried squirrel tastes like, asked Ryan. Fried squirrel would have to be cooked in oil, Andrea said. That's what fried means. If Digger was electrocuted, she would have been broiled or baked. I take a cooking class after school, and so I know these things. She's so funny. Okay, here we go. Why can't an electrocuted squirrel fall on Andrea's head? Wait a minute, said Alexia. If Mrs. Mentry touches that live wire, she could get the shock of her life too. You're right, said Mr. Harrison. We got to get down on our knees around the hole. Mrs. Men Mrs. Mentry, are you down there? Michael hollered. There was a long pause and then, of course I'm down here, <gasps> yelled a faraway voice. Why is there a hole in the floor? I'm going to sue the school. Mrs. Mentry sounded pretty mad. The school is 50 years old, Mr. Harrison yelled into the hole. Stuff is breaking all the time. Tell me what you see, Neil yelled. Any dead squirrels down there? I can't see anything, Mrs. Mentry shouted back. Get me out of here. I need to call my lawyer. Don't touch any wires, Mrs. Mentry, Andrea warned. Mr. Harrison looked at us seriously. I'm too big to fit through this hole, kids, he said. A few of you need to go down there and help Mrs. Mentry out. So we all wanted to go down the hole except for Emily, who was scared, of course. Mr. Harrison chose the skinniest ones, me, Andrea, Alexia, and Ryan to go down there and rescue Mrs. Mentry. We lowered ourselves through the hole one at a time. It was scary, but exciting too. The candles on our cake, it didn't give off a lot of light. I'm down, I said when I, and look, there they are going down. Wow. So I, I'm down, said when, when my feet touched the bottom. It was dusty and it was dirty. Mrs. Mentry, Andre asked, where are you? Silence. Do you see anything? Alexia asked. No, I've just seen a face, said Ryan. Where? said Andrea. Is it Miss Mentry? And at that moment, the scariest thing in the history of the world happened. I heard a deep rumbling sound, then a crash, and then the next thing I knew, the ceiling was falling on top of us. 
It was a cave in. That's the end of chapter 10. Okay, chapter 11. I don't want to hold your hand. Help. That was the first thing I heard when I opened my eyes. I'm not sure if it was if I was out a few seconds or a few hours. It didn't feel like I had broken any bones or anything. There was concrete and dust and junk here, there, and everywhere. Am I dead? I asked. I don't think so, Arlo, said Andrea, unless we're both dead. I knew I couldn't be dead because if I was in heaven, Andrea wouldn't be there. When I when the dust had cleared, I was in the, I was in a little cave deep beneath the ground with Andrea, Alexia, and Ryan. And luckily, the whole school hadn't fallen on our heads, except for a few scratches. But we were all okay. I could hardly see a thing. My candle was gone. My cake was gone too, and I was cold. This was the worst thing to happen since TV turn off week. We're trapped, Ryan said, like those miners in Chile. Those miners were underground for months before they got rescued, said Alexia. Hey, maybe we'll be on TV when we get out, I said. The miners in Chile were on TV all the time. TV, said Andrea, all excited. Do I, do I, how do I look? Is my hair messed up? I couldn't even see Andrea's dumb hair. It was too dark. Will you stop thinking about how you look for once? Alexia told her. We could die in here. Die? I hadn't even thought about dying until Alexia brought it up. I wish I could run away to Antarctica and go live with the penguins. Then I heard another voice in the distance. It was coming from far above our heads. It sounded like Mr. Harrison. Are you kids okay? He yelled. I feel fine, yelled Andrea. An emergency rescue crew is coming, he hollered. They have a giant drill. We'll have you kids out of there soon. Where did they get a giant drill, I asked. From rent a, from rent a giant drill, Mr. Harrison said. You can rent anything. What about Mrs. Mentry, Andrea asked. She's not with us. She's okay, Mr. Harrison said. Just before they came in, she crawled out of the hole that Digger dug in the playground. Oh, I'll bet she's really mad, Ryan said. She'll probably never visit our school again. Mr. Harrison told us that it might take the emergency rescue crew a few hours to drill a, a hole through the cement and pull us out of the way. He sounded really upset. I should have known better, he said. I should have, I should have never let you kids go down there. It's okay, Mr. Harrison, Andrea told him. I sat on the floor between Andrea and Alexia, and then Ryan sat across from us. There wasn't a lot of room, so we had to sit close together. I'm scared, Andrea said. What if they can't rescue us? Hold my hand, Arlo. I am not holding your hand, I told her. Hold Ryan's hand. I don't want to hold her hand, Ryan said. And I don't want to hold your hand, Arlo. No, I want to hold your hand, Arlo, Andrea said. Don't bother me, I told her. Hey, I want to hold AJ's hand too, said Alexia. I asked if I could hold Arlo's hand first, Andrea told Alexia. So, Alexia said, you get to hold his hand all the time. It's my turn to hold his hand. Stop fighting, I told them. I don't want to hold either of your hands. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Andrea and Alexia started to cry. Okay, okay, I said. I'll hold both of your hands. Just stop crying. I held hands with Andrea and Alexia. Disgusting. Ooh, you're holding hands in the dark with two girls, AJ, said Ryan. You must be in love with them. Quiet, you dumb head. I told Ryan. I had to sit in the dark holding hands with Andrea and Alexia for a million hundred hours. I thought I was going to die. Isn't this romantic, Arlo? Andrea asked. No, I wish we still had our candles, said Alexia. Candles are so romantic, said Andrea. Yeah, I said. People must have been romantic all the time before Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. We were down there for a million hundred hours, and it didn't seem like we were ever going to be rescued. Arlo, Andrea said, do you want to know a secret? No. Well, in case we don't make it out of here, I want to tell you something, said Andrea. 
something I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. Well, I don't want to hear it. She loves you, said Alexia. That's not what I was going to say, Andrea said. What I, was, what I wanted to say was, but she didn't get the chance to finish her sentence because at that very moment, we heard a loud drilling sound above us. And they were coming to rescue us, I shouted. And we all cheered. Finally, I could let go of the girl's hands. The drilling got louder, and a few minutes later, we saw a little hole open up above our heads. Mr. Harrison put his eyeball against the hole. When are you guys going to get out of here? I shouted up at him. Going to get us out of here. Any time at all, he said. It won't be long. I'm fixing a hole, and I'll get you. I will, and we can work it out. I've got a feeling, and all I've got to do is... Mr. Harrison wasn't making any sense at all. What should we do? I asked. I need you, he asked. See that big rock over there? Move it over to the side so the drill can get through. I tried to move the rock, but it was too heavy. I'm so tired, I said. Ryan and the girls crawled over to help. Dig it, Mr. Harrison told us. Carry that weight all together now. Don't let me down. All four of us pushed against the rock as hard as we could, and finally, with a little help from, his, from my friends, I was able to slide it out of the way. Okay, Mr. Harrison said. We're going to drill again. Wait, get back. We moved out of the way, and the drill started up again. It was really loud. There was pieces, pieces of cement were falling around us. It was scary and cool at the same time. And then suddenly the drill came through and we could see a big hole open up above us. Light flooded in. We could hear all the kids upstairs cheering. Here comes the sun, I shouted. We're safe, Andrea yelled. We were about to climb up through the hole when I heard a noise in the corner. There was movement. What was that? Alexia asked. Maybe it's the fried squirrel, said Ryan. It's not a fried squirrel, said Andrea. It's a live squirrel. It's Digger. Ah! And that's the end of chapter 11. So chapter 12 is called Super Squirrel. Okay, ready? A live squirrel was staring at me no more than two feet away. Ryan, Andrea, Alexia, and I climbed out of the hole in the ground like our pants were on fire. You should have been there. I thought I was going to die. If Digger chewed through electrical wire, how come she didn't get electrocuted? Ryan asked me when we got to the top. She must have she must have super squirrel powers, I told him. And then the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Digger jumped out of the hole after us. She looked at us. She looked all scared, like she didn't know what to do or where to go. She was sitting there just looking at everybody. Oh, look at that cute squirrel, all the girls yelled. It's adorable. Kill it, yelled the boys. We started chasing Digger down the hall, and I didn't know what we were going to do if we caught her, but it was funny. It was fun anyway. Finally, one of the teachers opened a door, and Digger ran out of the school. When we got back to the front office, all the lights in the school suddenly came back on, and everybody cheered. Yay! Okay, hold on real quick. Mm. Elementary was standing by herself in the front hallway, waiting for a ride home. There was dirt on her face and her clothes looked kind of muddy and messed up. She didn't look very happy. I'll be on my way, she said when she saw us. I'm so glad you're okay, Mrs. Mentry, said Andrea. Will you come back and visit us sometime? Sure, she replied. Over my dead body. Hip, hip, hooray! Elementary's going to come back and visit us after she's dead. Goodbye, we all said when a car pulled up to drive her home. After it was over, we were on the TV news and there was a picture in the newspaper of me being chased out of the hole by Digger, the super squirrel. It was a real Kodak moment. Kids were asking me for my autograph. And, you know, I was a famous celebrity like that Snooky lady on TV. Maybe we'll get our own reality TV show. Maybe elementary will sue elementary school. Maybe Mr. Harrison really is one of the Beatles. Maybe Digger will dig another hole into the school. Maybe Mr. Granite will get through page 23 in our math book. Maybe Mrs. Lily will finally get a scoop so she can pick up so she can pick up her dog's poop. Maybe grown-ups will stop drinking so much coffee. Uh yeah, that's not going to happen. Look, I have some coffee. 
Maybe I'll find out what Andrea wanted to say to me when we were trapped in the cave. Maybe we'll, fi we'll, get, we'll finally get off the fritz. Maybe we'll be back to talk. Maybe we'll be, be able to talk to Mrs. Mentry into coming back to visit our school again while she's still alive. But it won't be easy. The end. Yay! Oh, that's funny. There's AJ with the super squirrel. Very, very, very good. Very good. I like this one. This one was very mysterious. You didn't know what was going to happen. Suspenseful, right? I love those types of books. All right, boys and girls, that is the end of our um, of our chapter book for the week. For those of you who want to test, oh, real quick, um, if you have library books, I ask you, please, please, please remind your parents, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, tío, tía, um, please, let's go drop off the library books. Um, they're at the front of the school, boys and girls. Please don't forget, Miss Olvera has so many books to collect from all the students, okay? So here is the quiz number. It's 146355, and it's a 3.5. All right, boys and girls, that ends our week eight. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter book. Have an awesome Friday and an even better weekend. And don't forget to watch on Monday for our new book. Bye, boys and girls.